your brain can communicate anxiety and stress to your gut microbiome. These days, everyone is talking about the gut microbiome, and for a good reason. Our gut bacteria regulate many of our bodily functions, from creating vitamins to controlling our immune system, our brain function, and of course, our metabolism and weight. They are critical to our long-term health. Dr. Hyman recently sat down with his colleagues at the Ultra Wellness Center, Drs. Todd Lapine, George Papa Nicolau, and Elizabeth Boham, to take a deeper look at how the gut microbiome plays such a vital role in the health of our entire body. Let's like back up a little bit and talk about this whole thing of the microbiome. Because we started with functional medicine, there wasn't the word microbiome, but we still focused on normalizing the gut function. We talked about the 4R program, which is a restoration program for the gut and how that can help so many different diseases. The microbiome is the sum total of all the organisms that we have and carry around inside of us. And that also can include uh, uh, viruses. It can also include fungi. You know, the ecosystem of the microbiome inside the body is like a rainforest. Mm. And at some point, some people's ecosystems are so disturbed and so messed up that it's like napalm has hit your rainforest. It's like a corn monocrop. Yeah. So you've got this whole ecosystem bacteria. It's been disturbed by all these reasons you talked about, C-sections, antibiotic use, lack of breastfeeding, and so on. And our diet also uh, plays a huge role in the growth of good or bad bacteria. So yep. you can feed it certain things and it makes it worse and other things and it makes it better. So talk about that. Yeah. So, so I always tell patients that when you're eating food, you want to be choosing your food, not just for you, what you like, your, your, you know, the things that are pleasurable for you, but you also want to be feeding the good bacteria. And we talked earlier about the, uh, this acromancia mucinophilia. That's a specific bacteria that is in the body and that you want to have on high levels. And when we do the testing, we can actually determine, do you have high levels of it or do you have low levels or do you have no levels uh, or very low levels? And there are certain foods which you can incorporate into your diet, things like pomegranate and uh, maca and uh, acacia, acacia fiber, cranberries and things like that. These are foods which are basically pre, uh, pre, uh, prebiotics. And when you incorporate them into your diet, you, it's like putting miracle Grow on that garden. They start to flourish. Mm. They start to take over and they help balance out the whole ecosystem. Yeah, I think it's one of the biggest advances in our thinking about gut. We just give probiotics and that'll fix it. But, you know, you're giving like 50 billion is a lot, right? But you have yeah, tr tr 100 yeah. trillion bacteria. Yeah. So it's like a drop in the ocean. Exactly. And one of the big insights I had was actually from an experience I had last year where I developed colitis. It's a long story, but I had been sick from mold and I've told that story and I had a recurrence uh, of my gut because I had the C. diff and I, that was kind of really messed me up. And I checked my stool and I had really low levels of this acromancia, which has been linked to autoimmune disease, been linked to poor response to immunotherapy for cancer. It's been linked to cardiometabolic disease and diabetes. And I'm like, whoa, this is not good. So I started to research it and created this cocktail of cranberry, pomegranate, green tea, acacia fiber, some probiotics, other prebiotics. And I took it and it literally within three weeks, I went from full-blown colitis to completely normal, perfect. Yeah, And it was sort of a wake up call for me, which was, you can't just give probiotics, you've got to feed the whole inner garden. And Absolutely. what it likes is certain foods and it likes all the polyphenols. Yes, and the, the polyphenols. The colorful, dark rainbow color of chemicals that are in plant foods. Yeah. There are certain plant foods that have more of them, like the berries and so forth. Absolutely, yeah. Your microbiome is dependent on what you feed it. How you grow your inner garden depends on what you're eating. Exactly. And you can create a nasty garden with weeds and toxins and bad stuff and poisonous plants, or you can create a really flourishing, rich garden that actually takes care of you. Yeah, absolutely. And then also the other acid thing that a lot of even physicians are not even aware of is that most of your immune system is in your gut. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I had uh, one patient in particular who I saw who came in, it was a, it was a great story. She came in um, and she was uh, having uh, MS as her diagnosis. She also had an autoimmune air, disease, autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis, and she also had uh, infertility. And uh, I did a, a complete workup on her. She had uh, dysbiosis, had bacterial and yeast overgrowth, also had sensitivity uh, to gluten, and had also some not a heavy, not a big level, but some level of, of mercury in the body. So I worked on uh, diet, worked on uh, you know both prebiotics and probiotics to clean up the gut. Got her completely off of uh, gluten. And lo and behold, guess what? Her multiple sclerosis went away. Amazing. Disappeared. Wow. All right, not, not to say that- And you got all, her medals out too. Yeah, not to say that all cases of multiple sclerosis are due to that, but 
there are many pathways to multiple sclerosis, just that there are many pathways to Alzheimer's disease. Or any disease. Or any disease, exactly, because the body will manifest it uh, in, in, in only certain uh, uh, inflammatory pathways. But, and then, so ultimately, she got off of her medications. Her MS to this day is in complete remission. She has no symptoms, on no meds, and as a side effect, she got pregnant. The personalization of medicine is what functional medicine is all about. And that's really what's different here about how we practice medicine at the Ultra Wellness Center, because we're looking at each person as an individual. We're creating yeah. personalized medicine and personalized health, which is a, is a radically new way of thinking. And we just lump everybody with the same symptoms in the same categories, but it doesn't tell you anything about the cause. And I always say, just because you know the name of your disease doesn't mean you know what's wrong with you, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And that's what we do through very detailed histories here, through very advanced diagnostic testing, the look at some of these things. So the microbiome is this ecosystem of bugs in our gut. It's trillions mm -hmm. of bacteria. It outnumbers our cells by 10 to one. It outnumbers our DNA by 100 to one. And it has been linked to everything from autoimmune disease to cancer, to heart disease, to diabetes, to obesity, to autism, to Alzheimer's. I mean, right. you, the list goes on and on. Let's talk about yeah. the gut in connection right. to some of these diseases. What we know about the microbiome is those bacteria actually train our immune system. They're, they're very closely related to our immune system. And they, they, they will, they, our immune system identifies antigenic material from the bacteria, and it, it, the bacteria is able to tell the immune system, here's what you need to be worried about, here's what you don't need to be worried about. Yeah. Right? And so when we alter that gut immunity, we can create inflammation, and when we create inflammation, we begin to break down that, 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 that membrane that's responsible for uh, opening and closing and letting good compounds and, and, and good nutrients in and keeping the bad guys out. Yeah. When that breaks down, we have leaky gut. And now all of a sudden, our immune system starts to see proteins and that have not been completely processed down to the peptide level that they're accustomed to, and they start making antibodies against commonly eaten foods. So. Stress is probably the, the start of all disease. Um, it, it impacts everything from your hormones um, on, you know, in your own body, but stress actually creates some neurochemical changes in your brain, and there's a communication between your brain and your gut microbiome. And your gut, your, it's called the second brain. It's the, the gut. second brain. Right. Well, some people think the gut was the first brain. Maybe. Right, you know, and that the, the, our brain only developed once mitochondria, we're starting to make energy force, and then we're able to convert, use that energy to make a second brain that allowed us to reason and so forth. However, um, once you have that gut-brain connection, stress can actually, you know, we have this vagus nerve. It's a, it's a super highway from the gut to the brain. And more, there's actually- It's the relaxation nerve. It's the relaxation nerve. And your brain can communicate anxiety and stress to your gut microbiome and actually change the makeup of your gut microbiome. Yeah, and your nervous system. Right, in your and gut. your nervous system. And it system. literally paralyzes, stress hormones literally paralyze your gut, your sympathetic nervous system and your fight or flight. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be digesting your food when you're running from a tiger. Right. You want your gut to shut down so you don't have to poop right. or do anything else. Right. So your gut shuts down and that's right. what happens. We live in a state of chronic stress and our gut's not working. And anybody who's kind of gone through this whole cancer thing or just gotten a disease or you know, gotten a diagnosis that sort of throws you back. You're like, why would this happen to me? Mm. Um, I really wanted to ask that question, why? Because I, you know, I didn't want it to happen again and I wanted to recover from it and I wanted to help my patients get better and not you know, you know, kind of figure this whole thing out. And functional medicine really helped me put all those pieces together. So just learning functional medicine helped me figure out, okay, you know, Okay, maybe I was eating well and exercising, not, you know, for some people that's a really important area that we focus on in terms of prevention of cancer, but for me, we needed to I needed to focus on, you know, managing my stress better, right? Or um, helping my body detoxify. And that's the beauty of functional medicine. And that's what yep. you said for yourself. You figured out your gut was a mess. Yep. You're, you weren't detoxifying, your genetics were off. So how did you fix that? So when when I'm working with somebody who's had cancer or any disease, but let's look at breast cancer for here. You know, when you take that functional medicine approach, you want to look at look at all aspects of their health to personalize their treatment plan for them. So this is powerful. So what you're saying is, if someone gets diagnosed with cancer, you just don't say, well, come back every six months or a year for a scan. Right. You go, wait a minute, there's a lot of stuff that can be addressed. Your diet, looking mm -hmm. at hormones and insulin resistance, looking at hormone metabolism, which is something that yes. most doctors don't look at. We'll get into that in a minute. Looking at toxins, looking at your gut microbiome, looking at your nutrient status. These are all things we test here at the Ultra Wellness Center. Yep. Even 
at Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Tara Sang, who's the head of the genomic personalized medicine uh, program there, is very focused on the microbiome of the gut and how changes in that lead to breast cancer. Right. So tell us about that connection. Well, you know, so there's this enzyme in the digestive system called beta-glucuronidase. So if you have too much of this one enzyme, we know that that ends up leading to higher levels of estrogen in the body. And we know that estrogen is associated with breast cancer, whether it's causing breast cancer or just causing breast cancer to grow. We know that when estrogen levels are high in the body, that can cause uh, more breast cancer. So it's interesting to note that when there's a shift in the microbiome, there could, there is a shift in this one enzyme, beta-glucuronidase, mm -hmm. and then that can cause that uncoupling, allowing that estrogen, as, as opposed to just getting released and pooped out, it gets reabsorbed into the body, re resulting in higher levels of estrogen in the body. So yeah, basically the liver packages up the estrogen, sends mm -hmm. it down into the poop, and it's supposed to just go out. Yep. But this bacteria sort of unwraps it from its package, and then yep. it's free, and it can get reabsorbed in the body, and then you end up with these chronically high levels. Yes. There's some types of estrogens that are healthier for us and other types that are more concerning. And, you know, we, we can influence estrogen metabolism with a bunch of phytonutrients, which is really, I mean, part of, part of why that metabolism occurs, there's some, of course, genetic components, but you can influence that based on some foods. Yeah. So, you know, broccoli is this amazing food, like your, your, um, your cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, they have um, what's in them. They have some phytonutrients like glucosinolates, which gets converted into sulforaphane in your digestive yeah. system. And that's, and, by the way, is like a patented thing that's used by John Hopkins to treat yes. breast cancer, which yes. is a broccoli pill, basically. Yeah, and that can help with influencing metabolism of estrogen. The specific makeup of bacteria, fungi, parasites, and viruses that create the gut microbiome are unique to each person. This is one of the many reasons why functional medicine treats the individual and not just the symptoms when it comes to managing illness and creating health. If you'd like to learn more about the functional medicine approach or how to become a patient at the Ultra Wellness Center, please visit www.ultrawellnesscenter.com. That's ultrawellnesscenter.com. Thank you for tuning into this mini episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy. Until next time.